What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be taking a look at a title called Above Snakes. We've covered this a couple of times in the past when it was kind of like on Steam Festival demos. I think it's been a while since we covered it the last time though. Like I've been letting it cool off because I knew their final release was coming. And so I didn't want to like overdo it with content prior to the final 1.0 release. Well, the 1.0 release is here. On the day that this video goes up, the game will be out and you can purchase it for yourself, which means that it's time for an appraisal. So I'm going to be hanging out for the next 30 minutes. We'll play the game naturally. I'll give you some commentary about what I like and what I don't like about it. And hopefully it'll help you out when it comes to deciding whether or not you wanted to get the game for your Yourself. If you decide to go for it, the game's down in the description. I always have a link for you down there. You'll also find a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream just in case you wanted to hang out live on any given day of the week. So what is Above Snakes? Above Snakes is a zombie apocalypse survival game uh, that's all about crafting and building your own map. You are a Native American lady who is left over after a town is wiped out by a bunch of zombies. And in fact, these guys right here are survivors of that zombie attack. The twist with this game is that you build the map yourself. So every activity you do while surviving on this map, everything from picking berries to chopping down trees... Uh, to like picking plants or drinking water, so on and so forth. It fills up this little meter over here, and it basically, for all intents and purposes, it levels up your map. And each time your map levels up, you can use crafting materials to make a new tile and place it where you want it to go. And after having placed it where you want it to go, different tiles and different biomes will produce different resources that you can only get from that biome. Kind of an interesting and compelling idea. I've been playing around with it now for about two and a half hours prior to the recording of this video. I haven't seen any zombies, so the zombie apocalypse... Well, I saw one zombie. It had me beat a zombie to death in the tutorial, so I know that they're here, but I haven't seen the zombie portion of the game, but I feel like I'm fairly well acclimated with the survival portion of the game as it stands, and I'm ready to give you a bit of a guided tour. Uh, this is my home. I built all of this. The game has a very nice art style. I think it's very charming to look at in-game. Some of it looks like it may be used like modified... Well, maybe not. I don't know. I don't want to say it. But anyways, either way, the game has a very nice art style. It's pleasant to look at. After you build a house, you kind of notice the way it's almost got like a clay look to it. It's almost like you're looking at something that Tim Burton made or something like that with your log cabins and whatnot. The only difference is it doesn't have black and white stripes and like weird little pink horns coming out of it everywhere. But the art style in this game is very pleasing. I think it strikes a nice balance in between minimalism and a level of detail that makes everything pop. We have access to different workbenches over here. I have built them all. They will allow you to make different things. This guy over here is just a general purpose workbench. I've got him leveled up to tier two right now. I'm actually, I need to go out and get plant fibers so that I can make a new workbench where I can actually process some of the hides that I've been getting from animals because I'm trying to make my way over to a weapon. Like, I want to have something I can defend myself with, and as of yet, I have not been gifted that by the spheres, and so I'm going to go chop some ferns and get some plant fibers, and I think once we got seven or eight of these bad boys, I should be able to knock out that new crafting bench. As you can see, our world just leveled up again, so I can kind of, like, place a piece wherever I want. Crafting recipes in this game are unlocked by the materials that you find around. So you will find materials such as cotton, hemp, rocks, stuff like that as you play your way through the game. Uh, that stuff can all be used and will pop up on screen like, oh, you have discovered a piece of this recipe. And then once you've got all the pieces put together, you can actually go through and, you know, build the damn thing. Uh, we've got ourselves a drying rack right there. Let's go ahead and put it in. Can I do anything with the tannery right now? I can make rope. Very nice. I can make rope and I can make fabric. Good. Smash out a rope for me, would you? I want to see what that unlocks. So that's given us a fishing rod, an enhanced pickaxe, and an enhanced axe. Intradasting. Let's go back over here and we will take a look. Do I need the workbench to make that or can I just do it by hand? It looks like I can just do it by hand. Looks like I need a bunch of ropes. And it looks like I need some beeswax to make the tier 3 tools, which hopefully are better than the tier 2 tools that I currently have. Love the nighttime in this game. I think they did a really good job with it. Uh, I play a lot of Icarus. I know a lot of people don't like Icarus, but Icarus is kind of like my comfort game. I play. I, I don't really like Icarus most of the time. 
But Icarus is like this weird game where I can put on like a movie that I've enjoyed since I was like 15 and I can just zone out and chop down trees and build like a rad base and like assign some talents and whatnot. Uh, but I play Icarus a lot and it's really dark at night in Icarus. There's no like glow from the sun or anything else. This game's lighting, especially look at the lighting over there. I'll show it to you actually. We'll run over there real quick. It's supposed to be dangerous at night. They say monsters come out at night, but I haven't seen any, so... I'm not going to worry about it, but the lighting effects in this game and the very, very soft shadows and whatnot are all very well implemented. They all look great. I don't have any complaints about them. Let's go ahead and nap until it's tomorrow, and then we'll kind of see what activities we can get up to. I need another rope before too long. Mm, I need to drink some water, too. Consumables. There we go. I'm going to eat all these I'm going to eat, like, a felony quantity of, quantity of berries right now. Now that I've eaten my felony quantity of berries, that's right, you didn't even know that law was on the books, did you? Mm-hmm. See, that's Splat right there. He keeps a weather eye out for anything that might get him entrapped. Uh, we've got our two things over here, so I can handcraft a better axe. And since there's always the possibility in this game that we might get jumped, doesn't feel like the worst idea. Uh, this game does have, it, the UI is going to take a little bit of getting used to. So when you first start playing this game, it auto-adds everything to your hotbar that you pick up. But you can't click and drag things off your hotbar, and you can't seem to unassign them at all. And after a while of fiddling with it, I figured out it's that you got to find the item inside this list over here and press the number key on it to take it off of your hotbar. I disabled that. But anyways, the game does have a little bit of a console UI, I guess is the only way that I really know how. I'm not trying to like give you a loaded phrase here, but I would guess this game's probably got a release coming on consoles because the UI seems to be a hybrid in between like a PC focused UI and a console UI. It, it becomes really obvious when it comes to things like hotkeying and whatnot that the UI was not designed to be PC centric. And so if that's a thing that drives you up a wall or annoys you, it might be something to watch out for. I'll probably just put it. I want to finish the lake, so let's put that in right there. And then I needed. Yeah, we could probably put some planes in right there. I mean, that looks good to me. The world building in this game is incredibly satisfying. Uh, it satisfies a level of my OCD. So, like, do you ever play a game like Valheim and you'll have a seed? and you will play that seed, and you won't be able to find something specific that you're looking for, and, like, you need that thing in order to advance, and then you get frustrated and you use, like, the world seed map unpacker or whatever, and in using, you find out that you've just got, like, a really trash seed, and meh, like, why play that? So you restart and, like, move your character to another seed. This game doesn't really have that problem, because if the map sucks, it's your fault that it sucks. Because you've been building it the entire time by your own hand. And if you think your map sucks, there's nothing stopping you from deleting map tiles as well in this game. You can actually delete and remove tiles as much as you want. You have to farm some materials in order to do it. But wow, scooping water takes a lot of energy. I'm sleepy already. The other thing that I need is I need, a, I need beehives so that I can get a better pickaxe. Unfortunately, they don't seem altogether that interested in giving me the beehive that I actually need. So this may be a situation where we end up having to place more tiles before we can do anything with that. There are some... Oh, there's a beehive back here. It's hiding behind that tree. All right. Come here, little beehive. You live with me now. I'm going to take a little bit of damage, but it's going to be worth it to get that sweet, sweet honey. So there's our one beeswax. Is that going to let me... Is that enough for the upgraded pick? I need two beeswax and a hard antler. I think I can get this deer right here. Maybe. I guess it kind of depends if I can chase him down. I don't know. I meleeed one before. There we go. Finally got him. I had to chase him down. Well, skin and gut him. I took him down Friday the 13th style. Like a, like a serial killer. We got some hide... We got some meat. Looks good. I don't think the bunny's going to let us just roll up on him and bust his head open. That feels 
unlikely to me. The game does have RPG elements. I don't know if I've decided whether or not I'm going to tag the game with it on on YouTube yet. But there are RPG elements to the game. Your character does level up. It's very similar to Valheim. In fact, I'm pretty sure like you hit stuff with axes, you get better with axes. You hit stuff with hammers, you get better with hammers. You run a lot, you get better at running. Uh, it's a system that's very, very similar to the one in Valheim, actually. So if you find that to be a system to your liking, this game contains that. I don't see any beehives, man. In requiring further beehives, it may become necessary that I make our forest tiles larger. There's another beehive. That's I sort of like that fact about this game, though. Like, I was really on the fence. When I was playing with the game over the last couple hours, I was on the fence about whether or not building the map yourself actually adds to the gameplay experience. Because, mechanically, it's not folded. Like So there's no... It makes sense to me now, I guess. I was trying to pick my words right there. It does fit into the gameplay is the point that I'm trying to get to. Uh, so effectively, what it allows you to do is it allows you to mainline the ex exact resources you need right this second whenever you need them uh, in order to get more beeswax. For example, I just make a forest. And if I needed some water, I make a lake. The lake also has all the metal tiles on it, so if I need more tin, I make a lake. And so, at first, when I was playing around with the game, it was, oh, that's not good. I needed that beeswax, too, and it looks like it just kind of wonked out with the physics system and flew out into the ocean. It's a bit of a bummer. Did I at least get the two that I needed for handcrafting this guy right here? Good. Can I get tin with this guy? Because that's the next thing that I care about, is I've been trying to move up to the metal tier. There's a little bit of, like, experimentation that goes into this game, where because when you pick things up and you get new items, it unlocks the crafting recipes, you also get crafting recipes for the tiles. So all those tiles that I showed you that I have unlocked, I had to craft all of those out of, like, flint and out of, like, stone and out of rocks and out of berries and stuff like that so that I could deploy the map pieces where I wanted them to go. And so... Uh, it gives you a little bit of an incentive to get out there and, like, find new things inside biomes that you thought you already tapped out. I'm really hoping that this will give me tin ore right here. There we go. We got it. So this will give me tin ore. And in giving me tin ore, we should be able to take our workbench up to a tier 3. There it is. All right. So we got our tinny boys. I'm going to go back to base before zombies come out and start crawling all over the place with the intent for my brains because, like, I don't like to disappoint people with a light snack when they're expecting a full meal. But we'll pick it back on up in the morning, and we've got to chop down some more tin uh, nodes in order to get ourselves cruising. All right, so in the morning, i got to do, like, a little bit of maintenance out here. So we're going to have to jump onto the crafting bench real quick. And I need to distill some of that water. So we'll just mash that out real quick. If I throw that in there, what do I get out of it? I mean, it's just cooked meat, right? Yeah, it's just cooked meat. What happens if I put some, like, carrots? Let's put some carrots and a berry in there. What kind of... Do I get, like, a vegetable medley? Oh, it's just a generic cooked meal. Okay, that's fine. So that'll give me 20 hunger back. I'm gonna go ahead and eat it. I'm gonna drink my water probably eat that meal right there too and get myself trucking for the fletching table i need a branch and i need a bowstring i don't know how i get the bowstring i'm gonna guess that the bowstring maybe comes from like the t3 upgrade of this guy there we go we now have a t3 workbench and it looks like that's given us access to a furnace so that we can make ingots we've got bookshelves now uh, this game your house levels up so I don't know exactly how to bring up the menu. But anyways, when you're inside your house, you have a comfort level and everything. You may have noticed that I have decorations and stuff inside of here. There's a reason for that. Uh, everything you put inside your house raises your comfort level. And when your comfort level hits certain thresholds, you get to pick perks that increase your character's HP or like lower your hunger loss or like make you regain sanity while you sleep. Stuff like that. And so not only does your character kind of level up in a passive Valheim way, uh, you also level up your housing situation, which then gives you kind of like these permanent passives that make you better at the physical aspects of the game. I'm going to grab the rest of this tin over here. And then I think we're going to need some more rocks for our forge, too. This guy's got a quest for us. I placed this tile, by the way. There's also unique tiles. So you can place tiles that have quest givers 
and you also place the location where the quest will take place, which adds kind of like, I guess, a little bit of interesting mental gymnastics to the game and you trying to figure out the balance between convenience and also plugging up your map with a whole bunch of like quest destination locations that are never going to be useful after you already knocked out that quest. You know what I mean? Like, it's giving me a little bit of a, a head scratcher every now and again where I'm like, okay, well, I could place this quest. Its resolution could be right next to my house. Hmm. But then after that, it's going to be like an empty tile. There is dialogue in the game. Uh, you can talk with various characters. These are the only ones that I've met so far, but they are new from the demo. And so I'm going to skip on over it. And then it looks like we need to patch holes in tents. Uh, I'll patch some holes in your tents. How hard is it to patch a hole in a tent? Craft fabric. It should be easy enough. I've already got the recipe, so it's not going to be that much of a headache. Looks like it takes cotton. All right. Cotton grows inside the prairie biome that we've got out here. So I'm going to swing on down to the prairie and see if I can get myself some cotton. Oh, at this junction, I think I have enough hemp and I think I have enough cotton to last a good long while. On the plus side, we've leveled up our map a couple of times too, which means I'll get to place a few more tiles. I was hoping that the tin would unlock a new location as well for the overworld map because I've deployed pretty much every biome that I have for right now, so I'm guessing I'm supposed to be advancing the storyline with these refugees or whatever that are running from the same place that I was running from. We'll go to the tannery real quick and we'll just mash out a couple of these bad boys. And making those, it looks like I can enhance my robe, which gives me some health and some better protection. Go ahead and make all the cloth then. I want to get my upgrades. I want to be feeling a little bit better out here in these streets. There it is. Does she automatically put it on? It looks like it has a different appearance. Like it's got more, yeah, you can't see the cloth through it. It's got like uh, extra padding to it. All right. Well, this guy wanted, what, like two cloths? I can drop that back off with him. Panning seems pretty smooth when you go from zoomed in to zoom out. The game also seems to actually hold its resolution fairly well. Like, because they went for a minimalist style, you don't really need to worry about having high-res textures when you zoom in versus when you zoom out. There we go. That's what it is. He gave us a new spot. You've earned something. This is Brown's Miracle Tonic. It fixes all health problems you might have. Don't drink too much of it, you hear? Uh, any further help? You did so much already. Did my brother Sam tell you how we got here? Our mother Tara was with us during the escape, but she acted odd and jumped at us and crashed the wagon. Will you keep a lookout for her name? Her name is Miss Tara Brown. All right, I'll keep a lookout, but I don't know if... uh. She might be a little bit zombified, my man. Like, I know she's your mom or whatever, but she might be, you know, just a little a little bit zombinated on out. I'm guessing the tile that they gave me for the resolution for that quest is where she's going to be at. Tough to say. Let's go to the cartography table and see if we can knock it out. I need some cotton for the lumberjack cabin. All right, I can go grab some more cotton. Next day, let's go ahead and unlock this tile that I was farming my cotton for. And this is a Lumberjack's Cabin. It's a unique location. I have two deployments right now. The uniques very rarely cost you anything to put down. It looks like it wants to go right there, and that's perfectly fine to me. Uh, when placing tiles, they do have to match on all sides. You see how some of these tiles have like a little runway to them that leads into the next biome? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Like, you have to make sure that it matches on all sides. We'll put that guy right there since it's the obvious addition. And then I guess we'll go and investigate it and kind of like see what happens. I'm guessing this is going to be the next of the quest givers. I also kind of want to think about manufacturing like furnaces. Looks like we can make ingots and glass now. Moving along pretty quick. We're already in the metal age. Only been playing for like three hours. Nice. Uh, I'll probably put this guy... Probably over there just to give him a little bit of space. The rocks and the trees and stuff, they do come back inside your biome. So you're not going to deplete them. Uh, they do come back quite quickly, actually. I bulldozed these rocks like 45 minutes ago and they're already back. It takes a lumber to light this bad boy. I don't even think I have anything to burn inside of there. I'll give it a go, though.
Okay, so we got some nails. We got some new axe blueprints. We make glass out of rocks. Interesting. We can make a monocular that allow us to look around a little bit further. Okay, still not what I'm looking for. Like, I'm still looking for the bowstring so that I can arm myself because the melee combat feels really wonky and sluggish in this game. So, like, if I could do my business from afar, I think I'd rather do it from afar. But let's run up in this cabin real fast and see where it prompts us to go next. Because maybe in the process of chasing down that objective, we'll be able to expand our crafting list. You can rotate the world, by the way, in case you wanted to. You don't have, like, a fixed camera angle. Hmm. Hello there, pleased to meet you. I'm Stark, and this is my simple home. The woods were such a nice, safe place before the Lost Souls began roaming around. It's a shame. Luckily for me, I don't live in Corpse Creek. Uh, so why are you worried? You seem to be worried about people in Corpse Creek. Any particular reason? Do I? Well, I mean, these woods were such a nice, safe place before the Lost Souls were roaming around. It's a shame. I've heard dreadful things about that night. Say, do me a favor, I'll explain a little later, but it'll make me feel a lot better. Of course, what can I do? Glad to hear. I'm planning to make something, but I need the skull of a big animal, and it has to be of some size. Understood? Like a, a giant animal skull? Of like a steer? What's up with the dog? Oh, it's a, it's a chocolate lab. Nice. Rub his belly. Do it. Uh, what does his collar say? Boss. Or base. Okay. All right, you want to come with me, bro? I would love to have a dog that just follows me around on all my super fun, super special adventures. I mean, if you don't want to, I get it, but, like, it'd be nice. Chasing a stupid deer until he stops again. I don't know, they're not that hard to... I mean, if I saw a woman run up on a deer and take him out with, like, a thrown hatchet, I'd be like, damn. All right, don't mess with her. Not even, like, a little bit. Mess with her, you're gonna come up missing. It's got the rabbit over here, too. That one took a little bit more effort. The rabbit was a tiny bit more spry. Looks like he just gave me meat. No other special thing. He's coming up off the bunny. Okay, well, I guess I'll head back home then. So they did give us a new tile to play around with called the Glade, but it requires four rocks. Luckily, my entire front yard seems to just be continually invaded by giant boulders every time I go to sleep. So I've got easily, readily accessible rocks right here. I do wish there was a way to like lock the tile and make it so the stuff didn't regrow. Because I would actually like to strip and clear the area around my house and like build fences and stuff to make it look lived in. It's not like incredibly important to me, but it would be nice. Knock that out. Alright, so the glade's ready to go. Where do we want to put the... Oh, the glade is unique. Gotcha. And the glade goes inside the woods. Okay. I don't really want the glade to go on... I don't want the forest to go on too much farther. Like, the forest is getting a little overly chunky. I guess I'll just put it right there. I don't know. The forest has gotten kind of grandiose. Is something going to attack me when I go over here? I feel like something's going to attack me. No attack so far. Oh, there's like bone materials too. There's the animal skull. Oh, there's snakes, dude. I was stuck. Like I was trying to figure out what was happening because I was like stuck on collision or something. I don't know if they're like, there they are. All right, I got the snakes. Like, I, I got stuck, so I was, like, behind a tree, and I was, like, stuck on a bone or something over here. And, like, that's why I got all quiet, because I was like, is it a cutscene that's playing? Like, what's happening right here? Looks like we can skin the snakes for a little bit of meat, so that's nice. Can I do anything with the grave over here? Here in the forest, dark and deep, I offer you eternal sleep. Well, at least they went to the effort of making it rhyme. What was it that fought with this poor animal? No clue. Ow. What just bit me? Did I just get bit by a tree? This place have poisonous trees? The place does not have poisonous trees, by the way. I'm poisoned right now. I didn't realize that I had a status effect on me. So being poisoned, I should probably head back to my house and maybe take a little bit of a nap. No nothing makes high level rattlesnake poison go away like a good solid nap. Since the dawn of time, that's been how you've soothed the bite of the viper. Just a, a good solid nap between like two 
and four o'clock in the afternoon too, obviously. Like if you're napping from two to four in the morning, that's not a nap, that's just normal sleep. Probably gonna have to go draw some water pretty soon. Bones from some poor critter. Okay, well I've got bones now. Is it handcrafted that we made? I don't know if it's gonna be better in all honesty. Handcrafted wise, I don't know if the bone axe Bone Axe does 12 melee damage. That does 15 melee damage. Okay. So I think the bone is maybe worse. I didn't know if they were going to have like a Monster Hunter thing going on where you had to choose between bone and like metal for what you craft your tools out of and each one would have its own specific, you know, drawbacks. I had to go draw water. That was pretty much today's entire expenditure of energy was can I go draw water so that I can actually, like, boil off a couple more pots and be good to go. Perfect. I don't know. Can I honey the meat? Looks like that costs me, though, when it comes to hydration. Oh, I can make a meal that's got, like, hydration to it, though. What happens if I put that in there? Oh, it restores energy with the mint. Okay. That's interesting, and that restores health. Cool. Cool. So it's almost got like a little bit of a Bethesda brewing system where the things you put in determine how much like HP you get back, how much hunger you get back, how much water you get back, so on and so forth. I can dig it. Oh, we'll do like one big meal right there. It's probably like, yeah, meat skewer, like a crazy meat medley. That's what I thought it was going to do. I had a feeling. For now, I suppose I'll just drink some water. Knock that guy out real quick. And let's go drop off our skull with the forester who's out in the middle of the woods. Sir, hmm. I have your weird arbitrary object. He's going to make something special out of it. Should I, like, come? I'm going to loot your house. Don't worry about it. Yeah, like that dollar right there? That's now my dollar. Also over here, that fabric, it's now my fabric. That's my hunting gear you're looking at. You may have guessed, but I'm a passionate hunter. You seem to be interested in hunting. Yeah, I want to hunt. Well, this gear is mine, and I need it myself, so you have to get your own bow. But I would love to help. Hunter's Code. Somebody with your crafting skills should be able to make a bow. There's some tendon on my porch that you can use as a bowstring. Oh, nice. So it's like tendons or whatever that we needed. There's the bowstring. So that explains... I've been spending all this time trying to figure out how I get a bowstring. As it turns out, it's just a thing that it gives you as a matter of course... Uh, for the storyline. I've played the game for a couple hours. I think it's actually a fairly bog-standard survival crafting game if you're into that sort of thing. The good news is they seem to have been aware of the fact that it's just like a survival crafting game that does all the things that every other survival crafting game does, i.e. you're constantly mashing out new workbenches and then up-tiering those workbenches and making like new things that are all interconnected. And so they decided to add in the map building system which allows you to build the map to your specification and to your liking, and also allows you to build out areas that can supply your industry. I find that to be a really interesting handshake that they have between those two mechanics, and I'm hoping that more developers will maybe pick up that idea and fiddle with it, because I think there's something fertile here. That being said, combat in this game with melee seems to be a little bit clunky. I mean, all I've ever done is beat, like, snakes to death and one zombie. The game doesn't seem to be intensely interested in conflict as of right now. I'm roughly... I'm roughly three hours into the game right now, and I have fought three snakes and one zombie. So I don't think that, like, combat is really the focus of this game. Maybe it becomes a lot more combat heavy after we craft the bow here over on the bench. It may be just getting us acclimated. But, there's my bow. Yay. I've crafted the bow and I must return to Stark. Still, I haven't got to play around with the range combat yet, so maybe we'll wait a minute before we end the episode so at least I can fire a couple arrows at something and let you know how it feels. Alright, so I got a bow and arrow. Let's see how this thing feels. Is a rabbit over there? Shoot him. There you go. I mean, easy as pie. It's actually got a little bit of like a... What it kind of reminds me of is just using the default bow attack when you're playing Diablo 2 and you're playing as like the Amazon or whatever. That's kind of what it feels like to me is that it's got like a little bit of like, just kind of stop in place, fire your arrows. 
Yeah, it's got like an action RPG feeling to it. That's exactly what it feels like. It feels like an action RPG. So there you go. Range feels quite a bit better than the melee. The melee to me was a little bit chunky. And, and like it's got like a big wind up to it. And you're like stuck in place. And it has like no momentum to the swing when you're swinging off on it. And so the melee is a little bit chunky. Range feels like an action RPG. So if you've ever played a bow character in an action RPG, you'll know exactly what that feels like. <laughs> uh, my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what is worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so that you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we were falling on above snakes to see how rad it may or may not be. My thoughts about it? You just heard them. This is a fairly bog-standard survival crafting game that's got a very pretty coat of paint on it, and then it's got like an extra mechanic mixed in with the map building and you placing both the quest locations and the quest receive retrieval locations, which is kind of interesting, and you're like setting up your own farming zones in order to keep your industries going. And so I think that's probably enough to keep the game fresh and feeling pretty good on top of the fact that it's just really nice to look at. And so there you go. If you were looking for a little bit more survival crafting in your life, this one feels all right to me. Uh, I'll see y'all later. Thank you for stopping on in, and I'll catch y'all tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet. Bye, folks. <laughs>